Affirmative. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode here in Nashville, Tennessee. We're in the Lumix Lounge. You can find all the videos that we're doing this week at LumixLounge.com. I'm here on stage sitting with my buddy, Mr. Mark Homza. He's the co-founder and chief creative officer at a company called Flixel. We're going to find out what they do, what the state of that genre of art is, and kind of where things might be going. So hey, Mr. Homza, hey, Frederick. welcome. Great seeing you again. A pleasure. Hey, good to As see always. you. Thank you for right. having me. We, we've talked before about this stuff. So I want to yep. recap a little bit what we talked about before, okay. like you know what Flixel is for folks that may not know what Absolutely. the app is. And then I want to dive into some controversial stuff. So I'm going to hit you with some You're all about some, controversy. Some That's why balls. I come here. That's why we come here. That's right. Controversy. All right. Let's do um, it. Okay. Let's start Flixel. Yeah. What is Flixel? When was it founded? What was the problem you guys were seeking to solve? Perfect. So Flixel Photos was founded in 2011 um, in Canada and Toronto. And the key issues we were trying to solve was making uh, cinemagraphs, which are living photos, making, making that art form really accessible to users by providing creation tools and a delivery system that's going to be really easy and intuitive. Yeah. Right? So when we first stumbled upon the art form, our, our business partner and CEO, uh, Phil LeBlanc, stumbled upon these online. And, he, and his first reaction was, this is such a cool and innovative way of telling stories, right? Yeah. We're all storytellers as photographers, and it's all about how can we better tell our stories or more effectively. And yeah. cinemagraphs have these really, this kind of mesmerizing, captivating component to them where it's like immediate, like a video after press play, you got to commit a certain amount of time. Yeah. And, and a still image is beautiful, but, it, but it's still, yeah. right? So it's kind of this hybrid, it's kind of interesting blend between these two traditional mediums, creating entirely new art form, visual yeah. language, right? It's kind of redefining how we tell our story. So his first inclination was, well, I want to do this. Yeah. This sounds amazing. Okay, is there an application? Is there a community around this? Not really. Yeah. So the way the, the images were first brought to our attention was by this uh, photography duo, Kevin Berg and, and, uh, and Jamie Beck, who are really good friends of ours and are just fantastic, fantastic creators and yeah. really inspired Flixel. Mm -hmm. Without them, there's no Flixel. Uh, and so the, the first reaction was, how do we make these? I want to do these. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm an artist. I love to take pictures. I love to do video. And there was nothing out there that made it easy to do. So we had to go through traditional uh, video editing softwares like you know Photoshop or, or Adobe Premiere, yeah, After Final Effects, Cut, okay. After Effects. Yeah. And the process was just so tedious. Mm -hmm. It took so many steps to finally achieve your end result. So you know, talking to a lot of photographers when we started this, it was like, oh, we love this. This is a great art form. We're interested. But my gosh, it takes so long to, to create these. Yeah. So we said, all right, how can you create a tool that will make it really easy and really intuitive to create these? Yeah. Uh, and that's where Flixel for mobile was born, for iOS, yep. which was kind of the first iteration. We had these... It was iOS only when you guys Initially, yeah, we yeah. had these grand dreams of becoming the next Instagram. And, you know, because we saw this beautiful community that was, that was really developing and growing around still images. And yeah. we said, well, wait a minute, what if we do something around living images, right? Mm -hmm. And so that was real, pretty successful, but then we noticed that in order to create better, better content, better quality content, we had to really focus on photographers, professional photographers, yeah. people that were not necessarily shooting with their phone, just from like a, you know, from a, you know, sharing, hey, here's, here's my kale salad coming to life kind of a thing, but mm -hmm. you know what, I'm a pro photographer, I shoot video on a tripod, I explore video, I kind of blend both art forms, and I really do something beautiful, sort yeah. of like what Kevin... Kevin Berg and Jamie, Jamie Beck from Ann Street yeah. Studios were doing. Yeah. So we said, I think it's time to move towards a professional kind of version of the application. So then we graduated from being mobile only mm -hmm. into um, what we call now Flixel Cinemagraph Pro and for the Mac. that's on the desktop, yeah. That's on the desktop, and that's just, we've been overwhelmed by how successful it's been, and just very grateful it launched number one in 80 countries last year. Uh, 2014 Apple Design Award, um, Flixel One Digital. Company of the Year, yep. Next Media Awards, and Best of the App Store. So we've just been, it's just been, the reaction has been overwhelmingly positive. And things, as far as the company overall, you, you're, help, you're, you're a co-founder, right? So Correct. So clearly invested in the DNA of this company. Are you happy with where things are right now in 2015? Obviously, I mean, you want it to be better always, yeah. you know. I mean, I'm, I'm very happy and pleased with how, you know, my fellow partners and the team have grown. I mean, from, from the initial idea, which mm -hmm. was just this, this, you know, kind of mobile app, that was outputting GIFs to now being a professional software used all around the world, um, you know, reaching number one, yeah. uh, s selling a lot of copies, and really consequently propagating and, 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 and evangelizing an entirely new 
media. That's the thing. That's and that's, the thing. And that's, that's new. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and that gets us really, really excited. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, also as a as a, as a co-founder, we have certain responsibilities uh, in continuously pushing forward and growing the company. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, there's obviously things we want to improve upon. We want to do better. We mm -hmm. want to we want to grow for sure, and That's we want to reach more people. And edu I think at this point we're at a stage of education and mm -hmm. and, and and giving people more tools and understanding, you know, from the workflow of how to capture this kind of imagery, helping them better conceptualize this sort of imagery because, yeah. you know, it is really you're shooting video. Yeah. But you're still taking a photographic approach from a compositional wanna, wanna, standpoint, right? I so I want to talk through that that yeah. process a little bit, but I want to. You know, first, some devil's advocate stuff in here, right? So, brace yourself. I'm going to make you cry. No, You're going to go Al Pacino and devil's advocate yeah. on me here. If you were a tree, Mark, what kind of if tree If I was a tree, you? well. <laughs> it would be an animated tree. Um, okay, so some folks may say, you know what, look at this stuff. It's it's trendy. It's, it's yeah. fat. It's no, you know, it's going to go we're away. Trendy. You know, Prince, you know, we're, we're here at Imaging, or Imaging USA. We're yeah. right next to the Epson booth over here making these fantastic, giant, beautiful prints in there. Beautiful. They're, They're beautiful like, prints. that is art. Yep. This is a fad. What do you say to that? Well, I think I, I usually upset some people when we when we have those kind of discussions, but I'll be very polite here. Don't be polite. Come I on. Know. All right. <laughs> You're um, from New York, right? What you uh, well, I'm actually Canadian, so it's in my DNA <laughs> oh, to be polite, yeah, right? Yeah. You're, uh, you're, you're impolite, but you say sorry at the end. Exactly. And A from time to time. <laughs> sorry, A. Right? Um... Listen, I don't think print is dead. I think print print has its relevance, and, and, and depending on, on what context, everything is contextual, right? Mm -hmm. But we certainly can't ignore that we're living in, a, in an era of screens, of digital screens. For sure. example, I mean, what was it recently? Apple had its like highest grossing quarter. They sold over a billion mobile devices. Yeah. Um, yeah. You in know, two you, months, they're going to slap screens on all of our wrists. Yeah. Right, wearables, right? That's <laughs> yeah. sort of the next big thing. You yeah. walk through... You walk through Times Square or through New York City, whether it's in a subway, uh, you know, a, a restaurant, a hotel lobby, or on mm -hmm. an elevator. What do you see? You see a s digital screen. Yeah. Uh, you're, you take a bathroom break, you look up. Yeah. A digital screen. Everywhere. So you know, I'm not saying print is dead and definitely has its relevance, but photographers, artists, content creators cannot um, ignore that we're surrounded in this you know age of screens and need to create content or adapt their content. Yeah, for this sort for, of for the screen for this medium. When you when you when we look at this as an art form and we look yep. at the and I want to talk just briefly on how these are created, but yep. when you look at this and you hit it on you hit on a little bit before when you're talking about video, linear storytelling, yep. you know, and you've got all the components of audio and all that stuff with it. Um, and you've got the still photograph which is art, but you're you're capturing a single moment in time, right? Yes. This is somewhere in between how do you how do you get the message across our heart? What's the it's what's the way what the way I'm trying to the, to phrase this question is if you're creating a story in a single frame with one an, an animated element in there, how do photographers think about that? I mean, how do how do you tell folks to like okay, normally you know it's composition, you're going to use the rule of thirds here, or yeah. if you're shooting video, you need you know it's your your uh, subjects coming into the frame and leading here, but right. you know those kind of things. Here it's different. You yeah. Know? How do you get them in that mindset? Yeah, I think, I mean, those are all very good questions. I think there's two kind of things. There, there, there's a technical approach, which is a little different. So mm -hmm. the workflow in terms of capturing these is very different, right? So you're shooting video, you're on a tripod. So this isn't a handheld sort of process. Right. Uh, you're not shooting with strobe. So even from a rhythmic standpoint, it's very different, right? A lot of photographers are used to snap, snap, and there's a rhythm. There's a beat kind of the model's adapting, adjusting. Yeah. So yeah. here there's a whole... It's an approach where a lot of stillness or stability is required, so the direction from behind the camera also kind of changes. Mm -hmm. um, and you're not using strobe, so it's not pack, 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 but rather it's a continuous light setup. So yeah. either you're outside so using the no sun. Yeah. There's no There's no cues. Well, there is direction. So in the sense that you're sort of like, I mean, you're kind of like a, you're kind of like a film director almost, mm -hmm. but yet you're setting up your shot compositionally as a video. So from a conceptual standpoint, you really have to approach this in a way where you're very prepared. Mm -hmm. You have your concept already predetermined. And you know what's kind of, sort of what's going to come to life. And there's always those surprises, right? In a, in a creative moment, there's, there's, there's a bit of inspiration or spontaneity and something new happens. But all in all, in general, when you approach a cinemagraph kind of flixel production, you should really have a predetermined creative, right? Yeah. Because, like you said, you know, if you're doing a, a, a forward loop, mm -hmm. right? Then you have to understand your kind of looping styles. Yeah. You, you know, if you want, let's say, some create some sort of a background movement in the foreground, the, you know, your subject is still, yeah. well, you're going to want to forecast someone coming in and then nicely coming out mm -hmm. of that frame. So you want to you close that loop very nicely. Yep. If you're using a bounce loop, which is kind of, you know, start, finish, and then back and forth, 
let's say, nice billowing dress, where you're going to want to time that so perfectly and, and edit your frames just right so you don't have this weird kind of hiccup, yeah, right? Because then at the end of the loop, that, right, jerk, that gives it that away jerky, and breaks the illusion, right? Exactly, because then you, you, know, you go from this mesmerizing, sort of captivating state to being like, yeah, it's like, oh, oh, okay, I'm in a loop. Yeah, yeah okay, what's going on here? You yeah. know, and, we, and we've done some beautiful content. We did this really cool uh, shoot for uh, Sexy Hair in the Estate of Marilyn Monroe. Mm -hmm. If you go on Flixhold.com, you check it out. Yeah, yeah, And I it's just that. perfect. And that was, a, that was very successful. So people ask us always, like, where do these live? Where mm -hmm. are these, where, what are the applications? So yeah. I refer to that campaign because, A, from a creative standpoint, the loop was so beautiful. Mm -hmm. To give a little context to the audience, that was uh, the 60th anniversary of the seven-year itch film, which was shot by uh, Sam Shaw in 1954. Uh -huh. So what we decided to do was to bring that moment to life. But what was so iconic about that moment? It was that white dress when yeah. she kind of she stands the, over. On the grate. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So we froze everything and just brought that little component to life. And it yeah. was so powerful. Uh, and yeah, so we had to make sure that loop was going to be perfectly yeah. seamless. No, no crossfade, no forward loop, a bounce loop, but just perfectly executed, yeah. edited just right. Um, and then in terms of the different applications, because people are like, well, what do we do with these? Where, where do mm -hmm. we post them? Yep. Rich media display, right? Banner ads are static. Most people ignore them. Yeah. Add a little motion into them. Suddenly, you're yeah. completely changing the interaction, so you can, right? you can output as a GIF if you wanted to, right? You can, but the problem is, is that um, a lot of advertising networks don't support GIFs. Yeah. Or when they do, they limit the... So there, there are restrictions in terms of format, meaning... It's like five frames on certain ad networks. Mm -hmm. So the problem is quality. So a lot yeah. of like luxury brands won't necessarily want to leverage GIFs in an advertising content or cinemagraphs, which back in 2011 were only outputted as GIFs because it just doesn't look great. I don't yeah. want to associate a, a luxury brand or let's say I'm, I'm an apparel company. Yeah. And I put up a GIF and a GIF, what, 10 frames? There's a lot yeah. of banding. People associate GIFs with like blinking by now. Yeah, look at me, look yeah. at me kind of yeah. a thing, right? Where cinemagraphs are a much more classier, elegant version sophisticated version I know they want to sound pretentious but I think I think it just benefits all brands because whether I'm selling apparel whether I'm a cosmetics company I want to make sure that my products are properly highlight, highlighted right. and, 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 and presented right and if I'm using a gif image is blurry there's dittering there's yep. banding unless they're very very small but then I don't what really people, what people are going right? to say is okay that's great but if I do make a gif I know GIF, GIF, which is the right one? GIF, GIF. Actually, the GIF, the GIF Illuminati would say, hey, GIF. we're probably getting an email later GIF. saying, guys, come on. GIF, GIF, GIF no. whatever. Um, GIF peanut butter? Yeah. I don't know. Choosy mother's shoes, GIF. GIF. Right. <laughs> so, uh, so, you know, they'll say that, okay, yeah, there may be dithering. You know, I may only have 256 colors to play with. Yeah. However, I know it's going to play everywhere. You know, it's going to work in every browser, it's going to work on every phone, etc. How have you guys tackled the issue of playability and being able to, you know, this, my, my next thought in the brain would be, okay, these are, I'm going to make a, I'm going to export a high quality, awesome looping video and I'm going to throw it up on YouTube, yep. but I can't loop on YouTube. Okay, I'm going to put right. it on Vimeo. Yep. I don't know if I can loop Yeah, you got to press play, right? You got to press right play. Right there's a barrier to entry. Yeah, and, and I'm going to have the controls on there and all that yeah. stuff. How do you guys uh, get around that? Well, you bring up a good question because two things we were trying to solve when we started. A is creating a piece of software. It's creation tool that's going to make creating cinemagraphs really easy. Yeah. So, And that's Flixel Cinemagraph Pro. Mm -hmm. Flixel.com, Mac App Store, it's available. But then we said, how do we, how do we output these and deliver these across the yeah, web? the other half of the question. The other, yeah. right? Because a lot of photographers come to see us and saying, you know what, I did this beautiful lighting, great shadows, and, I, and I'm working with, and, and, you know, and I talked this with, with Kevin from, uh, from Anstry Studios, who was like, yeah. you know, we go see brands, and sometimes it's like, ah, we want better quality, we want better this, mm -hmm. and a lot of brands would be also, I want to take this asset, and I want to use it as a banner ad as part of my media, media buy, yep. right? I'm buying, uh, I'm buying X amount of still, video, I want to amplify my, my media, my media mm -hmm. plan, mm -hmm. and I want some cinemagraphs. Not yeah. GIFs, I want cinemagraphs. But wait a minute, I gotta use this as a GIF. Yep. So okay, all that the, work goes the down. Quality the is not there. What do you guys have for me? So what we came up with is Flixel Cloud. So what Flixel Cloud does, and it works very similarly to YouTube, where when you get the software, it comes with a basic package, and then we have a monthly subscription, mm -hmm. where basically every image that you output from our system comes with an iframe, an embed link, just a okay. little snippet of HTML. Yeah. And so you take that, and just like a YouTube video, you can embed it any website, blog, and we'll play across Facebook, any device. Everywhere. Well, for Facebook, what you can do is export uh, an MP4 mm -hmm. that loops for 30 seconds. Yeah. 
and upload that into your into yeah, your exactly. feed, right? Because right now at Facebook and Instagram autoplay, so you don't even realize it's a video. You don't not, you're not actually playing play, yeah. pressing play. And then and then some people say, well, well, I need it to loop infinitely. I'm like, well, listen to me. If you can actually hold your con your customer's attention for more than five six seconds, right, right. Your, your, your engagement is through the roof. You're already winning, right? Because people spend about 1 to 1.5 seconds on a still mm -hmm. image and then go to the next. Yeah. Where through some of our data, we've noticed that people spend anywhere from 7 to 10, 12 seconds on a, on a Flixel just yeah. because they're... It's like getting sucked into the yeah, image. They're yeah, they're just kind of like, what's happening? And, you know, mm -hmm. like say if you're working with like a jewelry company, you've got the earring, the earrings nicely flowing. Well, everyone's trying to figure out what's happening. Yeah. You're not fighting for their attention. It's not, I feel it's really, it's not an overwhelming approach from an advertising standpoint. It's underwhelming, mm -hmm. but yet so powerful and so effective that draws the user in. That's why we've seen data as much as, we've seen as much as a 5.6 increase in click-through for a, for a Flixel or Cinemagraph ad versus that's, uh, that's, a static. That's same huge. creative, same creative, yeah. but one banner ad or digital advertising comes to life, one yeah. run remains static. And the differential, I mean, 5.6 is 500%. That's, yeah. that's a game changer. That so is. That is. That, that's the difference between a successful campaign and an unsuccessful one. Yeah. Absolutely, where, yeah. you know, the advertising is just, is just simply ignored. So, so when you, when yeah. you, so let's, let's talk a little bit about hardware, right? So sure. we're here in the Panasonic booth and, yeah. you know, and I know that 4K video has been one of the key catalysts to making this movement, technology, yes. art form possible. Yes. But you could do it with 1080. It's much better with 4K, right? So talk through that a little bit. I love 4K. Um, you know, when we saw those early cinemagraphs created by like, you know, Jamie Beck and Kevin Berg, they would use like red cameras and they would shoot, you know, 6K with 6K sensors. And then again, they had to crunch everything out as a GIF, which was like, oh, so heartbreaking. But they still look, they still look okay. Yeah. They're pretty good. Um, but for the mass audience, it's such an expensive purchase, right? If you're going to get a red camera, it's you know twenty five, thirty thousand. Yeah. It's just it's just unaccessible. Right. So what I love what Panasonic has done is they've introduced a 4K camera mm -hmm. that captures 4K quality video at a super accessible price point. So we've done tons of campaigns where we've actually used the camera, um, and it's amazing. Primarily because you know eighty percent of your image on a, on, a, on a cinemagraph, on a Flixel cinemagraph, is going to be still. Yeah. So we're talking with 4K four times the horizontal resolution of HD. I mean, yeah. it's print quality, right? It is. Yeah. So when you extract your, 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 when you choose a still frame, your master frame or key frame from your video footage, mm -hmm. which is how we do it. We shoot video, and then we're like, okay, we love this beautiful moment. The expression is just right. I'm going to pull that frame, and I'm going to retouch in, let's say, uh, you know, Adobe Photoshop or Lightroom. I got so much more information because mm -hmm. I'm working with a 4K still frame. Right. I can, you know, create a beautiful retouch. Yeah, you have more Flux pixels to work with. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. then when I re-import that into Flixel Cinemagraph Pro, I make my my color adjustments so the video component matches my still retouching. Yeah, and I'm good to go. So 4K, I think, is a game changer. Even if you shoot 4K at the source and then downgrade a 1080 for web purposes or whatever. Yeah, such a difference, right? The image is less soft. It's crisper and. I, I'm a so huge advocate for 4K. Huge. So, do you like what? What do you guys think when? So, we're at 4K now. It's 2015. We're we're at 4K as this ultra HD resolution. UHD, yeah. Yeah. Are you looking forward to the next levels of that? Like I'm looking, 6K. I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking forward to 16K. 16K. I'm kidding. Yeah. Uh, they say after 8K. Can you really distinguish the difference? That's what we're we're kind of yeah. debating at this point. I can't point. tell the difference between 720 and 1080 now. Right. <laughs> And we have a problem. Exactly. <laughs> You're blind. <Gary. laughs> um, but I think, I mean, look, 4K is becoming the new standard, new HD. Yeah. 4K screens are everywhere. And we're really seeing a really distinctive, remarkable difference in between how when we capture footage in 4K and when we display it on 4K screen, just how significant the difference is. Yeah. So I'm really excited because now you can put up, you know, I, I think the future is also uh, digital frames. Yeah. So, you know. We've been trying to do that forever, but now I've been seeing some really cool digital frames. You know what? We were at CES with, with Panasonic supporting yeah. hybrid. We're doing really cool creative, you know, mm. stuff. And a lot of companies are starting to, you know, and part of their kind of, you know, emerging innovative yeah. solutions groups are coming up with this digital frame technology. There's also a couple of cool companies, startups in New York, they're doing the same thing where it's not about watching TV, it's strictly about projecting cool art. Like, yeah. what do you do with all this cool art that's online? How do you get that onto beautiful screens? Yeah. Plus, you know, if I have a beautiful slideshow, I want it to be beautifully represented. And I think this will further validate 
sort of what we're doing. And by going 4K and higher, like we said, the quality is just so phenomenal that you're just in a state of awe, right? Yeah. And what do, you, what do you think? I want to wrap it up, and I want to get your ideas, your, your thoughts sure. on what's coming next for the software, you know, yeah. kind of features that you can tease that yeah. um, people may uh, look forward to. But, you know, the, the primary gist of the conversation has been about kind of commercial and fine art applications of the technique. When do you think it will start seeing it go more mainstream, like portraiture, you know, the in senior portraits and wedding and you know those kind of genres of photography you know what i think as the advertising community continues to legitimize this art form it's going to trickle down and spread into other verticals mm -hmm. uh, but we're already seeing a really high uptake uh within the wedding wedding photography uh industry because yeah. again what what bride doesn't want to you know a billowing dress or going out on a lake and a, you know kind of beautiful sort of canoe set up and then the water just kind of trickling mm -hmm. You know, the potential for creativity is so immense. So we're seeing a lot of wedding photographers reach out and start to sell cinemagraphs as part of their packages. That's That's we're great. starting to see a lot of companies uh, and, and photographers who do a lot of photo booths or events starting to say, hey, you know what, this, is gonna, this, this, this creates such a wow factor and such an immersive experience. Let's reinvent sort of the, the, the photo booth or the portrait shot. Mm -hmm. uh, we're seeing, I mean, teenagers, right? So, you know, you talk about portraits and like high school seniors. Get, we're, we're in talks with a lot of photographers that are reaching out and saying, you know, we just got your software, and I'm about to, you know, shoot a thousand students in the next, you know, a couple months. We're really excited to use this and just add another layer, right? It's, yeah. I always tell people, you know, sometimes you get the odd uh, comment, well, uh, you know, this will never replace photography. I'm not, we're not trying to replace photography. Right. This is something complementary. Always You're adding say, to uh, it, yeah. We always say, depending on your narrative, depending on, because again, we're storytellers, right? Depending on the story you're saying, yeah. choose the right medium. Right. And sometimes the cinemagraph is what people click through online your website that drives traffic to a your beautiful video, video content yeah, yeah, or yeah. to other still imagery. Or maybe you drop a cinemagraph as your thumbnail on a video that then incentivizes more people to press play and now give me a deeper, richer experience of your brand or your story because I want to learn more. Love it. Love it. Right? Yeah. That's um, cool. So it's those kinds of things that, that really excite us. And yes, we're starting to see an uptake in portraiture, mm -hmm. wedding. Um, and so that's that's really that's exciting. Just add another layer, another way to tell that's tell your story, right? All right, so let, let's close it off with uh, next steps and future forward-looking Flixel features. <laughs> what you is know, the future? Where's our crystal features? ball? You got a crystal ball? Yeah. Hey, you're a co-founder and you know chief creative officer. So if anybody knows, you know. So <laughs> well, what's on that whiteboard in Canada? <laughs> oh man, a lot of secrets. I'll tell you a lot of secrets. You know, yeah. uh, we're working. I think I think this is the year of, of more partnerships for us. You know, we got Apple's endorsement, which is huge. We're mm -hmm. looking at other, you know, we like to be a software and a product that's very complementary to other pieces of software. Yeah. Right? So mm -hmm. a lot of people say, you know, can I use this with Adobe? Absolutely you can. It works yeah. beautifully. Export that still, bring it into Photoshop, bring it back in. Wonderful. What kind of cameras do you guys suggest? Well, we're in the Panasonic booth. We're here for a reason, right? Right, right. 4K, super accessible. Yep. Um, accessible price point, beautiful end result. Mm -hmm. So I think this is going to be a further, further, you know, interesting partnerships for us and building more awareness and education, educating artists and creatives on how they can take this That's medium, yeah. monetize, make money, impress their clients and help their clients tell their stories in a more effective and immediate way. Love it. Mark Holmes, thank you. Always a pleasure. Always a Love pleasure your show. chatting with you. Thank Love you. It. Thank, thank you. you so much. All right, that's it for this session here at Imaging USA 2015 in the Lumix Lounge booth, here in the Panasonic booth. Uh, if you want to check out more videos like this, just head over to lumixlounge.com. You can see this video and others like it. We'll see you in the next session.